Hey Gadget Groupies, this has been a fascinating month for checking out laptops. I've been playing with Absolute Bookends from Lenovo. First their entry-level sub $200 IdeaPad 100S, and now their monster gaming system, the Y700 Touch. It's an absolute head trip swapping back and forth between one of the most cost-conscious systems a company can offer, then jumping into one of the more powerful rigs they make. This is a nice little follow-up to last year's Y50, which I reviewed with the UHD touchscreen. Lenovo's name doesn't carry as much weight in the gaming arena as Razer might, for example, but their history building business and mobile workstation solutions served them well with a well-specced, decently priced and powerful system. Though the UHD screen created some quirks with Windows 8 and some games which wouldn't scale properly. This year, we're reviewing the HD touchscreen version, which sees minor improvements all around. Looking at build quality and design, Lenovo has refined the gamer-inspired look. Nice tapers at the screen and speakers are subtle, providing a little Tron touch without looking overly Mountain Dew-fueled. And I'm still enjoying the red edge lighting on the keyboard. It's a sharp-looking system. Thankfully, they did address my biggest complaint with last year's build, and the new Y700 is not a sharp feeling system. Edges, corners, and seams are beautifully finished, and rough edges have disappeared behind a satiny finish. The only complaint to add about this design over last year's laptop is the brushed exterior top lid seems to pick up fingerprints and smudges more readily. We're looking at a lower resolution screen than the system we reviewed last year, but it's a punchy, bright display with great viewing angles. Color and hue are much improved over the yellowish tone last year's system had, and also this screen refreshes at 60 hertz, which should make some people really happy, as I read a lot of complaints from people about the UHD screen refreshing at 48 hertz. The keyboard is spacious and easy to type on, there's nice key travel, but I'll always want just a bit more of the clack that you'll feel on a proper ThinkPad keyboard. As this is a rig for gamers, your WASD keys get a little extra attention in case you forgot how to walk in your favorite first person shooter. Did I mention this was a lappy for gamers? Because it is. For gamers. You know, video games. The left side holds a 3.5mm headset jack, a memory card reader, USB port, and where you plug it in to charge the battery. Uh, charging happens via a proprietary plug. Hopefully soon more systems like this will switch over to USB-C, maybe? The right side holds a pair of USB 3 ports, full-sized HDMI, and Ethernet ports. The speakers on top of the Y700 are backed up by a subwoofer built into the bottom casing. Lenovo has paid attention to their audio here. I've used some really anemic sounding Lenovo ThinkPads in the past, but the Y700 improves on the full bassy sound of its predecessor. That rumble is helpful to overcome the fan noise this thing can generate when the CPU and GPU get cooking. This is desktop grade computing in a self-contained unit, but I wouldn't exactly call it mobile. Lenovo sent along a really nice backpack to review it with, but honestly, it never left the house. I look at systems like this as being excellent solutions for saving space. Think bedroom or dorm room. The Y700 is way easier to move around than a gaming tower, obviously, but it's not something I would want to lug around with me regularly, like to class or back and forth from the office. I would love to have a system like this for trade shows, though. Just leave it in my hotel room to render video from a show floor, for example. It's big. It's heavy. It's maybe just a bit too large for my lap, but I did use it to cut up a little video while sitting on the couch. The system vents well enough to keep lap usage from getting uncomfortably warm. The Y700 fulfills its role as a gaming machine well. We don't have any of the funkiness with older titles not supporting UHD screens. This year we move up to an NVIDIA GTX 960M over last year's 860M. The card bench is better, but in-game performance doesn't seem very much different. I'm in the same ballpark with games like Arkham City delivering almost 60 frame per second average frame rates, but thankfully the minimum frame rate has actually improved over last year's model. Touchscreens usually aren't high on the list of priorities for a gaming rig, but I've come to appreciate the mixed interface on Windows 10. Some things are easier to use while hitting the trackpad, but some things like notifications and settings I prefer reaching up and tapping the screen. I also prefer touch for interacting with apps, and there are a few games, like my favorite tower defense games, where touch feels like a better control than mouse and keyboard. I'm not as hardcore a gamer as I used to be, but another benefit of shopping a gaming system is the knowledge that you're getting a really powerful computer which can serve multiple roles, often for less than a similarly specced out workstation. The Y700 is way overpowered for chewing up traditional work, office, and document solutions. It's a solid system for moving up to video editing and rendering. While I wasn't blown away by the gaming performance improvements, this thing was substantially faster at rendering UHD video. Our test consists of two minutes of footage rendered at 50 megabits per second in Sony Vegas Pro, which does utilize the graphics card. Last year's Lenovo took almost 27 minutes to produce a new video file. The Y700 completed the same test in just under 20 minutes. This puts the Y700 about six minutes behind my desktop workstation powered by a GTX 970. 
There's usually a glut of pre-installed value-added software, but happily this laptop stayed fairly clean out of the box. We do get the normal collection of Lenovo Assistant and Settings apps, and of course I almost instantly uninstalled McAfee protection software, but otherwise you're really only getting the standard outlay of Microsoft services. This is a very positive move from a company that has abused pre-installed software in the past. Now, I'm not too keen on battery benchmarking power systems like this. Chances are pretty good you're not trying to hypermile this battery, you're wanting to use it for that horsepower. The system reports about four hours of battery life on a full charge, depending on your system settings and screen brightness. Now, streaming 30 minutes of HD video over Wi-Fi resulted in 16% battery drain, which is one of the worst performers we've had on this test. Cranking the screen brightness and hitting the GPU harder will drain that even faster. Depending on how demanding your playtime is, expect only a couple hours on the battery at most. But honestly, are we really expecting that kind of runtime from a semi-portable powerhouse like this? I think not. The 15-inch Y700 starts at $840 for a non-touchscreen, 8GB of RAM, and a 1TB spinning disk drive. This unit, as reviewed, sells for $1150 for a touchscreen, 16GB of RAM, and a 128GB solid-state drive, and 1TB spinning disk hard drive. Pricing doesn't get out of hand for the top-level systems either, as the UHD touchscreen version with a 512GB solid-state drive will top out at $1550. The Y50 was notorious for being difficult to shop all the different hardware variants Lenovo produced, but thankfully the Y700 product page is a bit simpler to follow between HD and UHD screen resolutions and touch or non-touch screen displays. So where's that leave us with the Lenovo Y700? Man, I hated sending this back to Lenovo. I really thought I was going to miss the UHD panel we got to play with last year, but a higher quality HD panel really wasn't that bad. Sure, my super high resolution photos didn't look as crisp and UHD video playback wasn't quite as sharp. But the overall practicality of the laptop kinda won me over. It's a beast of a rig. While I'm cooling off on gaming as I get older, this machine was more than capable of running my favorite titles at better than console quality, and it gave me the horsepower to produce high quality video content. You can almost look at this as a lower cost competitor to products like the ThinkPad W mobile workstation. Year to year, there isn't anything shocking about the improvements on display, but I'm really happy to see all the little issues that Lenovo has addressed in improving their gaming gear. A number of smaller adjustments really did add up to a more enjoyable experience. I'm really happy to see how competitive this category is right now. With some phenomenal offerings from MSI, Asus, Dell, and Razer, Lenovo competes very well on price and is one of the few companies offering a touchscreen in this space. I'll of course leave links down below this video where you can get more info and shop the Y700 online. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more reviews like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there supporting it. By shopping via the affiliate links below each of my videos, grabbing yourself a loot crate, or buying my book, Take Better Photos, Smartphone Photography for Noobs is now available on Amazon Kindle. And be sure to keep an eye out for my future phone and tablet coverage over at pocketnow.com. So hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.